Americans generally are unconscious. They're not conscious of what's going on. Uh, they don't think of food. They don't think of, of uh, it being medicine to their body. They don't think of food as being related to health. Because if you think about it, the media tells them not to worry about what they eat. The media says, drink pasteurized, homogenized, standardized, irradiated, long shelf life, capo produced milk. Got milk, right? The media lies to people constantly. So if you listen to the news and you believe the news to be true, which most people do, then you follow blindly behind the advice given to you. So why wouldn't you be an unconscious fool? It's the awakening of America. It's the, the people that have become conscious and realize that, wow, one in 80 kids has autism now. I wonder what's causing that. Why is one in four children have asthma? What's causing that? Why is it that one in three children born today is gonna to have diabetes in their life? That's a car wreck. I don't want my family in that. That's the conscious consumer. The conscious consumer says, whoa, I'm not being on that. I'm not jumping on that cliff. And they say, what is it that causes disease? It's not the lack of medical care. It is the complete lack of nutrition in our diets. The fact that we're eating all these processed foods with GMOs and hormones and antibiotics and then we treat everything with antibiotics and kill off the inner gut ecosystem that is our immune system. But the bottom line is chronic disease is not fixed by modern medicine at all. Modern medicine is associated with relief of signs and symptoms and pain, not the underlying disease process, which is metabolic, physiological, and nutritional. Modern medicine is a disaster when it comes to chronic illness in terms of treating it. Uh, the treatments for Crohn's disease are surgery and drugs that make it worse. The real treatment for, that's modern medicine's treatment, the real treatment for Crohn's disease is biodiverse fermented foods. Foods we're missing from our diets. You put those back into our diets, Crohn's goes away. And uh, the whole genetically modified thing is just a madness in its own right because, again, completely disconnected from consumers' needs. It's about the processor's needs to make a lot of money quick on the cheapest amount of feed, fewest inputs possible to make the fattest, plumpest piece of meat to be sold in the marketplace. And uh, that's not what I'm about. If genetically modified engineering was being done in the open, transparently, the secrets were being shown to the people, everybody knew it was being labeled so you knew you were eating or drinking something that was GMO, it'd be different. GMO is being done secretly. How is the public supposed to make an informed decision? That's the big problem I've got. If you want to do a GMO because you want to enhance something and you want to be a scientific freak, okay. But at least tell me about it so I can choose not to be involved in the scientific process that you want to do for your whatever you're going to do. Uh, I believe that if you're going to put a GMO out for human consumption, it should be fully transparent. The problem we have in California and around the world is that genetically modified foodstuffs are being put in the, in, the, in, the, in the marketplace and they're not properly tested and they're not labeled. So you don't know what you got, you can't make a choice. That's the biggest problem I have is the fact that you don't know what you're eating. So how are you supposed to say, I don't want to buy that if you don't know what you're buying? And that's why the GMO initiative in California is so critical that we get it on the ballot and we're able to pass this into law. So where people can consciously decide based on good information, they make better choices. And the problem we have in California is they're not allowed to have the information to make the choice. That's crime. That's trying to pull a fast one over on consumers for the betterment of the greed of Wall Street versus the need of humans. And that's just wrong. It's morally, ethically wrong. When you deal with people, as many as people I to, uh, talk to, when you talk to moms and you talk to consumers and you talk to kids, um, you're driven by a different set of passions. You really are. And uh, there's a lot of positive, good energy. There's, um, it, it's, just a, it's just a good place to be. Uh, when you're dealing with only processors or brokers or bankers and it's a sterile, ugly, you know, survival kind of thing versus a nourishing, loving, feeding kind of thing. It's a diff different deal. I mean, not bad. I like, I like my, uh, 
my office here. <laughs> You'll notice here, just beyond the, the chicken pen, down a couple hundred feet, you see where it's a little lighter over there. That's where the chickens used to be. That's where they were a couple days ago. We move these chickens every couple days, so they have the ability to have a clean, green environment in which to eat and live. And that keeps them disease free. It also keeps them well nourished with the right kind of food. So it, it's a completely different kind of, uh, of environment. And it produces a different kind of food. The eggs are entirely different. You crack the yolk on this, it's a bright orange yolk versus a pale yellow. Um, and they're delicious. This manure here is a gift of, that, of vital life. It's uh, incredible nourishment to the trees. Um, mankind has separated their crops from their animals. And this brings the animals obviously back to the crop in a way that nourishes the crop with the, all the nutrition necessary to really have a, uh, a good production tonnage. And this manure we're putting on here will last several years in terms of soil vitality. It adds back the bacteria, the uh, enzymatic action, the biological action, the uh, minerals, the, the, uh, the urea, the nitrogen, the phosphate, all those wonderful elements that the soil needs and these trees need to really produce a viable, vital, uh, high production organic crop. Very exciting. Almost ready to pop here. They're just beautiful. They're swollen here. They're getting ready. We'll have bloom here in the next week. And the bees will come around and spread the pollen between the trees and fertilize the trees and we'll have ourselves a beautiful crop this year of organic almonds. When you're doing things right, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know? That's beautiful to me. Green, sun drenched, that's really the thing that confirms it in my heart. It's clean and it's green and it's, it's really beautiful.